Throughout the Second World War, there were many different generals who would be captured by their enemies. For example, during the Battle of Stalingrad, General Paulus was seized by the Soviets, and for Stalin this was a huge coup, to have a man like Paulus with his vast military experience behind bars in the Soviet prisons. The Soviet dictator would even refuse a prisoner swap for his own son for Paulus, which virtually condemned his own son to death, but at times generals, if captured, could be given a significantly better treatment in their prison than ordinary prisoners. This was due to the respect some army members had for those of rank, even within the enemy. But there was one Soviet general who would become a victim of the SS inside of a concentration camp following his arrest, and he would be executed in a horrific manner as he was literally frozen to death one evening. He was left to die in the cold, and Dmitry Karbyshev was a man who was very experienced, but at the end of the war he would be given the most prominent medal for gallantry that existed in the Soviet Union. Join us today as we look at the execution of the Soviet general who was frozen to death, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Dmitry Karbyshev was born in Omsk on the 26th of October 1880, and he was part of a prominent Siberian Cossack family. However, when he was 12, his father died, and his mother raised him despite the family suffering financially. But Karbyshev then went into the army, and he graduated from the Siberian Cadet Corps in 1898 as a young man, and he would then go on to study at the St. Petersburg Nikolaev Military Engineering College. He would be involved in future conflicts in many different ways, but he was then part of the 1st East Siberian Sapper Battalion and would be in charge of battlefield telegraph operations, including laying cables for the Russian army. However, he was involved in the Russo-Japanese War, and in this he was responsible for building bridges and also conducting reconnaissance upon the enemy. He continued to lay telegraph cables and was decorated for bravery in the conflict and was promoted at the end of it. Karbyshev returned to his university in 1911 and then continued to be promoted inside of the army before he was sent to Brest-Livotsk to conduct construction work for the Brest Fortress and Karbyshev was placed in charge of this. But as the Second World War broke out, he would see action in combat in the Carpathians in the 8th Army on the southwestern front. He was involved in a number of battles and sieges and was wounded in the leg before he was promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Karbyshev participated in further offensives, but when the February Revolution broke out and the Russian Empire collapsed, he joined the local Red Guard detachment and would serve as an officer in the Bolshevik Red Army. During the Russian Civil War, he continued to use his expertise in building fortifications and defences for the Reds, and he was then given senior jobs inside of the headquarters in the North Caucasus military districts. It's clear to see that Dmitry Karbyshev was a trusted and talented man inside of the army, and he provided further engineering support for assaults against the Whites during the Civil War. From 1923 to 1926, he was appointed the chairman of the engineering committee of the main military engineering administration of the Red Army, and he then became a teacher before joining the General Staff Academy. At this time, Karbyshev was rubbing shoulders with many other Russian generals and officers, and he was even becoming known about to Stalin and other political figures. He continued to write books and papers on military engineering and history, and he specialised in constructing obstacles for defence and demolishing them for offensive movements. His reading became mandatory for Red Army commanders during the Second World War, and he was promoted to the rank of Lieutenant General in the Corps of Engineers in 1940. But during the Second World War, the experienced and battle-hardened Dmitry Karbyshev would yet again be called into action in another conflict. During the Winter War of 1939-1940, which occurred between the Soviet Union and Finland, Karbyshev would be seen near to the front lines, advising soldiers on engineering support and how to break the Mannerheim line. And he also advised them on building fortifications and bunkers. In June 1941, he was sent to inspect the Western Special Military District, but he would never have expected what would happen whilst he was doing this. The German army would invade the Soviet Union as Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, and many in the Soviet Union never believed that the two nations would go to war against each other. They had previously signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, which negotiated how the countries would split Poland between each other, and also it would state 
that there would not be hostilities between the Nazis and the Soviets for a period of 10 years. But Hitler ripped this up, and his tanks would rampage into Soviet lands and open up the eastern front of the Second World War. This saw some of the deadliest battles in human history, as battles such as Stalingrad and Kursk would see the destruction of cities and settlements, and there was a huge assault upon civilian life. Many would be slaughtered following the advancements of the German army, and the Wehrmacht rampaged at a huge speed, and they would initially have a lot of success inside of the Soviet Union. Karbyshev was at the headquarters of the Soviet Third Army in Grodno when the Germans invaded, and he would become a key part of the defence of the land, as his expertise in building fortifications would be needed. But on the 27th of June 1941, the Soviet 10th Army, where he had moved to the headquarters of, had been surrounded and destroyed during the Battle of Bialystok, Minsk. In August 1941, Karbyshev suffered post-concussion syndrome, whilst caught up in combat around the Dnieper River, and he would be captured by the Nazis. However, he was captured in an unconscious state, and had been knocked out by something. The Germans knew they had seized a man of significant rank, and a Soviet general, and because of this, Karbyshev would be sent to concentration camps. He would, through his imprisonment, be passed through a number of different concentration camps, including some of the most deadly, such as Maidenek, Auschwitz and Sachsenhausen. But to the Germans, he was seen as a vital asset, and Karbyshev was offered almost royal treatment if he would have cooperated with the enemy. The Germans promised that he would be released from the concentration camps, and would be given separate accommodation, and access to libraries and archives to write academic papers which could be used by the German military. He was also promised that he would be allowed to travel to the front lines to analyse battlefields. The Nazi hierarchy thought Karbyshev would cooperate, and he would speak good German himself. However, Karbyshev refused to cooperate with his enemies, and no amount of promises would change his mind. The Germans then threatened him and also tortured him, and the conditions of his imprisonment got much worse. After two years, the Nazis had given up negotiating, and it was said in his report that this key Soviet fortifier, a regular officer of the old Russian army, a man over 60 years old, proved fanatically devoted to the concept of loyalty to military duty and patriotism. All efforts to engage Karbyshev as a military engineering specialist are futile. He was then sent to Flossenborg concentration camp for a period of hard labour. As mentioned, he was transferred a number of times from different camps, and he would survive Auschwitz and Sachsenhausen, but Karbyshev was then sent on to Mauthausen in February 1945, and this would be the last site of his incarceration. Mauthausen was found in Upper Austria, and it would become infamous for a site of horror and forced labour, and it was focused around a quarry, and was a huge complex. Prisoners were forced to work in the quarries, and they were forced to carry huge rocks up the stairs of death, and there were many accidents which were common, and SS guards would execute inmates and play sick games with them. The plan for the SS at the camp was to exterminate prisoners through work, and they suffered from overcrowding and also starvation, and disease also swept through the site. But the work in the quarries was often made harder by the weather, as in summer the heat was unbearable, but in winter the freezing temperatures fell as low as minus 30 degrees Celsius. But the Nazis would utilise the weather to exterminate prisoners, and this is how they would deal with Karbyshev. At the time in the Second World War, the average life expectancy for a prisoner at Mauthausen was just a matter of months, and Dmitry Karbyshev would last just a matter of days. One Canadian prisoner of war, who was with the Soviet general when he was tortured and died, wrote of his brutal execution. It was said that, as soon as we entered the Mauthausen concentration camp, the Germans drove us into a shower room, ordered us to undress, and sprayed ice-cold water on us from above. This went on for a long time. Everyone turned blue. Many fell to the floor and died. The heart couldn't take it. To begin with, Karbyshev, who was in his 60s, managed to initially survive this treatment, and he and the other prisoners were then ordered to wear their underwear and place wooden blocks on their feet. They were then led out into a courtyard in the freezing cold temperatures. It was then said, General Karbyshev was standing in a group of Russian comrades not far from me. 
We know our time is up. After a couple of minutes, the Gestapo henchmen, who were standing behind us with hoses, fired streams of cold water at us. Those who tried to dodge the jets were bludgeoned over the head. Hundreds of people fell to the ground frozen or with crushed skulls. I saw how General Karbyshev was one of them. Karbyshev, it's believed, stood upright facing his executioners and he shouted encouragement at the other prisoners to try and survive, but then he was presumably battered and was left to die in the freezing cold. He was at the end of the Second World War decorated with the Hero of the Soviet Union medal and award, the highest honour for someone at the time, and nothing was known about his fate until all the pieces were put together at the end of the Second World War. A monument would even be put up for him inside of Mauthausen that read, to Dmitry Karbyshev, academic, soldier, communist. His life and death were an act of heroism in the name of life. Dmitry Karbyshev was a Soviet general who would be executed by the Nazis and the SS inside of a concentration camp in one of the most horrific ways possible. He was subjected to a harrowing attack and also was frozen to death by guards intent on killing him. He was a man who was very experienced inside of the military and rather than defect to the Germans and help their own war effort, he stayed true to his principles and beliefs and for this was subjected to years of hard imprisonment inside many of the deadliest concentration camps. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.